the UFC returns to Salt Lake City this weekend with UFC 307 headlined by two title fights. In the main event, we got Alex Poatan Pajera looking to defend his title for the third time as he takes on oncoming streaking challenger Khalil Roundtree. In the co-main event, we have the women's bantamweight title as we have Raquel Pennington looking to successfully defend her title for the first time, going up against former t uh, title holder Juliana Pena. We also have Jose Aldo taking on Mario Bautista in a high-stakes bantamweight matchup. Obviously, Aldo looking to build off that victory over Jonathan Martinez, and Mario Bautista is knocking on the door of title contendership. Let's see if he can pass the test this weekend. A quick reminder that this is the quick picks version of the UFC 307 breakdown. If you want an in-depth breakdown of the card where I go almost an hour breaking down all 12 fights, the best way to do so is check out the MMA Lawcast, which I dropped earlier this week. You can find the link in the description below or just check out the YouTube page where I have a ton of other great content as well. Just a reminder, ACA 180 goes down on Friday morning or Friday afternoon, I should say, and will likely last all day considering there are 25 fights on that Russian promotions card. I will have written breakdowns for every single one of those fights on the MMA LOT and Patreon page. So check that out if you want an appetizer to the UFC 307 card. All right. I hope you're laced up and ready to go because we're off and running with the first fight of the night as we have veterans Court McGee and Tim Means going at it here. I do think that Means is the better overall fighter in this spot and I don't think he'll have too much knockout power to worry about on the McGee side. I think we'll see a classic Means performance where he utilizes cl his clinch with his knees and his elbows and then distance striking with his kicks up the middle and his long range weapons and I think that'll allow him to pick apart McGee and win this fight on the scorecards. Next up, we have a rematch between Carlo Esparza and Tisha Pennington, originally meeting back in the Ultimate Fighter almost 10 years ago. Esparza was able to grind out Pennington over two rounds. However, I believe Pennington is very much improved since that matchup. And given that both these women are now moms, most recently Carlo Esparza, I do believe that we'll see Pennington a little bit better in terms of being in the cage and not having as much ring rust on her. She did fight earlier this year against Tabitha Ricci and came up short by split decision, but I still expect to have a better overall game here to win this fight on the scorecards which a da with a damage-based approach. Next up, Ryan Spann against Ovin St. Prue, a fight that was scheduled to take place in August, but an illness knocked St. Prue out of the matchup, and now they are scheduled to compete this weekend. I do believe St. Prue will do a good enough job in terms of avoiding the early finishing power of Ryan Spann and then chipping away at him in the second and third rounds where he should be able to win this fight on the scorecards, but that money line is very juicy at the current price. Next up, Cesar Almeida going up against Ihor Potieria. I do believe Almeida let down a lot of people last time against Roman Kopilov as he did not show the type of urgency we've seen him in the past in terms of working back to his feet. I don't think Potieria has that type of grappling and he will be forced to strike with the better striker, which would ultimately lead to Cesar Almeida finding a knockout here and getting his hand raised. Next up, Austin Hubbard going up against Alexander Hernandez, a battle between two guys who are based out of Colorado, but I do have to lean with the physicality and explosiveness of Alexander Hernandez, which should allow him to land better shots, defend the grappling of Hubbard, and eventually find a knockout in the second or third round. Next up, Marina Rodriguez going up against youngster Yasmin Lucindu. There's 15 years that separates these two, but I will have to lean with the veteran experience of Marina Rodriguez. I think she's the better striker here, and I don't think Lucindo does a good enough job in terms of controlling her opponents on the mat, which will force her to strike with the better striker and ultimately come up short on the scorecards. So give me Rodriguez and Rodriguez by decision. Next up, Wonderboy Thompson going up against Joaquin Buckley. We know what the blueprint is to be Wonderboy at this stage of his career. The 41-year-old is to go out there and grapple him, keep him on his back, and not allow him to get off on his uh, point-fighting karate style. Seeing what Buckley has been able to do in recent fights, especially against the taller and lankier Lener Sultan Ruzibov last time, I expect Buckley to get this fight to the ground promptly and from there utilize his top-heavy approach where he should be able to grind this out and win it on the scorecards. Next up, Roman Delize going up against Kevin Holland, and I'm kind of surprised that the line is as close as it is. I think the reckless fighting style of Delize will lead him into getting picked apart by Kevin Holland, who's a little bit quicker and a little bit more accurate with the shots down the pipe, and I think we'll see some good footwork, good range management, and some solid grappling defense from Holland to keep this fight in the striking realm, where he should ultimately pick apart Delize and win this fight on the scorecards. 
Next up, Katlyn Vieira going up against Kayla Harrison. Now, the odds a little bit wide for my liking, but that still does not take away from the fact that I think that Harrison goes out there and grinds this fight out. She'll be the superior grappler, and she might be at a little bit of a disadvantage in the striking round, but I don't think it's so much so to the point that Harrison won't be able to close the distance and get to her judo. Look for Harrison to get this to the ground, grind it out, and I think we'll see enough resistance from Vieira that she probably won't get finished, leading to Harrison winning this fight on the scorecards. Next up, the return of Jose Aldo going up against Mario Bautista. Now, Aldo pulled off the upset last time around against Jonathan Martinez, but I think he's going up against a much more dangerous opponent here in Mario Bautista. I think Bautista will do a good enough job in terms of landing his strikes from distance, and I think he'll be able to crack Aldo a few times, which will keep Aldo from getting to his game and getting into his groove. Although Bautista only has one knockout victory on his UFC record, I think a lot of opponents have been forced to grapple with him, something we don't often see from Aldo, which I think will lead to Bautista getting into his groove and landing the better strikes. I think Bautista is closer to his prime, and Aldo, coming in at 38 years old, might be a step behind here, and Bautista should be able to touch him up, maybe even leading to an eventual finish. Next up, Raquel Pennington looking to defend her title against Juliana Pena. And I do think that Pena is the overall better fighter here, but I think Pena's advantage in the wrestling realm will nullify it all. I think people overlooking Pena considering the beatdown that she suffered at the hands of Amanda Nunes last time, but I do think that Pennington is nowhere near Nunes's level. Look for Pena to go out there, you lean on her wrestling, lean on her grappling, and open up a submission opportunity within 10 to 15 minutes. And that brings us to the main event with Alex Poatan Pajera looking to defend his title for the third time against Khalil Roundtree. Now, the line is a little bit wide for my liking considering the, this fight taking place in the striking realm for the most part. We can't overlook the knockout power that Roundtree brings to the table. With that said, I will still be leaning with the technical advantages that Pereira has, and I think he'll eventually get Khalil to walk into a big shot, probably his patented left hook. Look for Pereira to keep this fight at distance and then do a good job in terms of countering Roundtree effectively and finding that big shot to put him out within two rounds. And still, light heavyweight champion Alex Pereira. There you guys go. Quick picks for UFC 307. Again, full card breakdown. Dropped earlier this week. Nearly an hour going in-depth on every single fight. I also have a bunch of other great content dropping for this card. Tomorrow, I'll be dropping the free parlay and the three best prop bets. Hope to see you guys there. Peace.